in this video I would like to talk a little bit about the two options you have to crease a surface and as you can see in this model the bike frame has a crease at the center line or that axis as well as my spokes they have creases as well one way is actually through inserting an additional loop cut so let me remove this loop cut go into object mode and now you can see that this is now a nice and soft surface and if I go ahead and add a loop cut you can see by the highlight how the closer I get this loop cut to the other one the stronger it will pinch meaning crease the surface so if I maybe go into top view or make a cut section view there you can see that how for example this loop cut starts to really yeah crease that part and the more with an edge slide I move that edge or that loop cut away you see you're softening then that crease so that's version one but if you don't really want to to add additional geometry but you would maybe rather like to play around with the look there is also a second approach and you see here that those center lines are actually highlighted in a red color and the reason for that is this color that basically means that there is a crease value applied to this edge so if I select for example this edge then you see inside my transform panel there is something called crease and it has 0 0.8 if I set this one for example to 0 you see it's very soft so think about this one like applying a magnetic value to this edge you see with one it creases very tightly and then where the a creased edge attaches to a non-creased edge then blender or the subsurface modifier calculates how it blends out same for example down here see that it's nice and soft and then feathers the only downside of this crease is it doesn't necessarily transfer into alias that easily so to get this over there's a little trick we have to do here when you work with this and the trick is basically once you know that this is the shape you really would like to have so I'm going to select this edge and for example uh, I position my 3d cursor at this point and then I'm selecting those two edges duplicate them move them over a little bit to the right and then with my 3d cursor selected I duplicate it press ctrl M and mirror it over to the y-axis and the whole point or reason behind this is I can delete this one now because I don't need it anymore and then I can go ahead and recreate the missing faces and then I will end up with a small gap and that's fine because that's what I was looking for Yeah, I can remove the crease now because now at this point I have two edges 
that I actually can crease. So I somewhat inserted a loop cut, but my loop cut is only as long as those lines I marked. And then kind of like it blends into the, the normal geometry. And you see that the result is not 100% the same, but actually very, very close to it. Now I mentioned before that in general, best practice is to work with four-sided polygons and try to eliminate triangles. For example, this is a triangle here. And I, I have another triangle up here. And triangles don't really work with poly uh, with NURB surfaces, but because we're using the subsurface modifier, you can see that. Let me maybe find a position where it could look good. There. You see, so here's my my triangle. But the modifier, when it starts to, to rebuild the surface out of four-sided faces, blends it or creates a new surface that fits it. And you see that the triangle results then into a four-sided polygon. So same up here. There is my original triangle. So what does this mean? That basically means that we cannot bring this raw polygon model into Maya and then into uh, Alias or, for example, T-splines with Rhino because the triangle will not be able to be converted into NURBS. But we have, in this case, apply at least one level of a modifier. So I have V1 click apply and then there you see that the mesh is being made a little bit smoother and here again there's my original triangle which is now a four-sided polygon same for example here so uh, you see this way then uh, the rather bad geometry is converted into usable geometry for continued workflow and in addition because we applied the, the modifier, if I, for example, then go ahead and continue for example, creasing those edges a little bit more, then I can, inside that new more dense mesh for example fix parts or uh, change the, the weight of those points so that maybe I can customize the result even a little bit more so basically what I'm talking about is is that you start with a very coarse model and then you uh, make it finer so that you have a, a denser mesh you could work with and then there you start sculpting in more details and then that for example we would bring into alias and you see that this way I'm able to model a surface which has a very very thin and crisp crease which would be uh, a little bit difficult with a polygon model where I don't have enough control points to work with. So that's a way how you could, for example, crease surfaces either through loop cuts or adding uh, creased edges and then bake maybe the geometry when you inserted triangular loop cuts at selected areas and make it this way you work with alias.